My guest today began to follow the teachings of Jesus some six decades ago. Since then, it has been such an amazing journey, one that has taken him all over the world. In fact, Ernie Tanner's missionary outreach called Hella Mission has flown humanitarian missions all over the globe. The seeds for Heli Mission were sown in 1969 when Ernie first visited Africa on a missionary trip. Two years later, he had an idea that would revolutionize his work. The idea to use helicopters to bring missionary and humanitarian relief to those who so desperately need it. And Heli Mission was born. Ernie Tanner is here to tell us his amazing story. Ernie, thank you so much for joining us today. Now, I want to take the story back to when you were just a young boy, you were 14 and a half years old, and you decided to leave home, which is, I have a son who's almost seven years old, and it's hard for me to fathom him leaving home in seven years, but just as a young teenager, uh, you decided to leave home. Tell us about that. Well, our home life was uh, not very easy, and uh, I wanted to uh, leave home as soon as possible. I was the youngest of four brothers and I was the first one to leave home and I wanted to go to the French part of Switzerland to learn French and just to get away from home. And to go into the hotel business. Well I didn't even realize that. I had never seen a hotel. Actually somebody uh, told me that they could get me a job mm -hmm. as a garçon d'office in French and that means just a house boy. But that office, I thought, that had something to do with an office. My father had, was working in the biggest insurance company in Switzerland, Winterthur, and he wanted me to come into that mm -hmm. office, and I didn't want to get into that office. And I thought that was something that had to do with an office, and I was very shocked when I came to that hotel and realized what it was really all about. Well, you wanted to go into the hotel business. Your dad wanted you to go into the insurance business, but the Lord had different plans. <laughs> Tell us about the time when you decided to become a follower of Jesus and you had that personal experience where you knew that there is more to this life than just what we can see, that there is a whole spiritual life as well. My whole um, vision of my life was fine art. I studied fine art. And eventually I realized that that wouldn't really fulfill my life. And so I was very disappointed. And out of that disappointment, I began to seek God. Uh, and uh, went to churches and was disappointed. And, and uh, I heard uh, somebody speak on a radio program in Philadelphia on my way to work. And I thought, this man, I, I wonder what he looks like. And, and just to see what he looked like, I went that evening. I didn't realize even that it was a church. And that evening, God spoke to my heart, and I gave my life to the Lord. What did that mean, God spoke to your heart? How did you know that well, the creator of the universe was speaking to Ernie Tanner? Well, it was very specific. Uh, the message was from Proverbs uh, 29, verse 1, If any man harden his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. And I saw my life in that church, and I knew God had been speaking to my heart I, in the confirmation and all that. And I thought, maybe I missed God. And during that service, I began to really be afraid that I had missed God. And then suddenly I realized, well, if that was the case, I wouldn't be here in this church. And that gave me the courage to go forward for prayer. And I was the only one in that church in two, two weeks of evangelism in the Philadelphia Gospel Tabernacle. And when I knelt there to pray, uh, suddenly I realized that Jesus died for me personally. Before, I, I always knew and believed that Jesus had died. I was mm -hmm. brought up religious and but I, I never realized that it was for me. And it broke my heart. Mm. I couldn't pray, I just cried. And when I got up, I felt so relieved. I thought I was half a meter bigger. When I walked out of that church, I thought I was hovering. I, I thought people think I'm crazy or drunk the way I was walking. I, I felt physically forgiveness. Mm. I felt that load uh, getting off my shoulders and uh, my life was changed completely from that moment on. 
And your vocation was changed, and that was the beginning of your work, doing missionary work. I want to pick up the story to 1969, when you decided to go on your very, very first missionary trip to Africa, something that dramatically changed the direction of your life. The call, if you want to say, uh, call it a call, was the, uh, the scripture verse, Matthew 24, 14. Uh, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to every tribe and then the end will come that's prophetically and i realized then every tribe has to reach be reached by the gospel and that time we were supporting the training of local pastors after colonialism broke down and so i got in touch with africa and then I began to realize, I made a first trip and began to realize that there were such vast areas that had never been reached with the gospel. And I thought, my goodness, it's going to take another thousand years. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, I'll, at least I'll do my part. And I started to walk through jungles and do evangelism on foot and pioneer work on foot. And, and then I heard about the Vietnam War, that helicopters were so important and, uh, and ideal in the war in the jungles, and they shut down one day, 22, and the other one, five. And I always thought, hey, what could we do in mission if we had helicopters? I'd never seen, never seen a helicopter, but I just thought that would help us to speed up the mission work. Instead of walking through jungles like St Livingston, it's going to take another <laughs> thousand years. And, and so I went to look at a company in Switzerland and saw a helicopter hover. And I thought, well, that would be something. And I bought 10 minutes of flying time and I told the pilot to fly low <laughs> over the grass and the wood and to, and, and to land somewhere. And he did, she did. And, and I was convinced this is a tool for mission. And then I went to Steve Stephen, one of the founders of MAF in London. Uh, I had known about him and uh, I, I asked him, what do you think of helicopters for mission work? He said, well, that would be the best, but you can't pay it. It's too expensive to buy, to insure, to maintain. And I was so disappointed. And on the way home, I thought, my Lord said, I shall supply all your needs. Mm -hmm according to the riches and glory. Next trip, I went to Africa. I talked to one of the leaders uh, uh, in, in, in uh, Cameroon, mission leaders, alliance leader, pastor from Norway. And I, I had walked with him before. I said, uh, uh, Bjorn, I, I think uh, I'm, I'm about bringing a helicopter. He got tears. And then he said, Five years ago, I dreamed someday a helicopter would come and help us. And if you come, we visit two missionary ladies, nurses, that live 100 kilometers away from the road. And to get out of there, they have to swim through two rivers. And uh, in, in the last synod, they decided to give them swim vests. In one of the rivers, there are even crocodiles. I thought, my goodness, they need a helicopter. 